Hey guys, welcome back. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Just wanted to take a minute today to let you have a look at my go box that I like to use uh, for various operations, maybe for field day or participating in some of our set exercises in our local county here. But I just wanted to give you a quick run through of kind of what I've got here going on. First thing you'll notice is the AZ-857D. I uh, love that radio. I also run the same rig in my Jeep. Uh, so it's a fabulous rig. It does have some limitations to it, but it does give me HF capabilities as well as 2 meter and 440. So run all of the digital work that I do uh, would be run through that particular radio. Right up above it, you'll see the automatic antenna tuner, uh, the YT100. Uh, it's a great tuner. Uh, automatic tuners obviously have their limits. They can't tune every antenna the way that a manual tuner uh, could probably tune a lot more. But it is a neat little antenna tuner to use along with the 857. Now because the 857 is tucked back in there quite a ways, audio is a little bit hard to hear. So this speaker here is the one that's connected to the 857 uh, that gives you more front facing audio making it a little bit easier to hear. Below the speaker you'll see the little uh, cheap Chinese radio and one of the reasons I chose this is because of its size. I mean you can see it sitting on top of the signal link. The little thing is tiny. Uh, it puts out I believe it's uh, 20 watts on VHF and 15 watts on UHF. Uh, so it's a great little rig. I love running that. Uh, that little guy it's a good addition to the 857 because if you're uh, trying to monitor multiple channels on VHF or UHF the 857 is not great at that. Uh, so it gives you another radio to be able to to listen to multiple channels Typically like on field day. I'm working HF on the 857 So I use the little Wantai radio to work my VHF and UHF Right below that little radio. You'll see the signal link sitting there uh, That's just a digital sound card that I can use in conjunction with a computer that is typically in this box To run all of the different digital modes that you might want to run uh, so we can run PSK31, uh, FT8, we can also run uh, Winlink. Uh, all the software is preloaded onto the laptop. Just to the left of this signal link, you'll see the LDG meter. Uh, typically keep that set just to look at SWR. That way I can make sure nothing crazy is going on with my antennas uh, from time to time. Right above that meter, here, you'll see the uh, MFJ power supply. This box is capable of being powered in a couple of different ways. Uh, it will take commercial mains, uh, hence the power supply. It also has a battery box that goes with it that's fed with a solar panel. When we get around to the back of the box, you'll see the switch that takes care of switching between commercial mains and the battery power automatically. One of the reasons I chose that particular power supply is because it already had the Anderson power poles on the rear of it so that gave me two power poles to connect to off of the rear and then of course you've got the other terminals up front if you need them it is adjustable so you can uh, use it to turn the voltage up or down as needed give me a second let me flip this box around we'll take a look at the other side okay so looking at the rear of the box across the top panel in the back uh, what you'll see is the, all the antenna connections for the various radios. So you've got UHF uh, and VHF here and HF here for the 857. Then this is the connector uh, for the little cheap Chinese radio that's in there. Uh, below that, maybe a little difficult to see, but up in here, this is the little box that I use to swap between commercial mains and battery power. Uh, so it'll trickle charge the battery while it's plugged up to the commercial mains and then as soon as you lose power or unplug the power supply it automatically swaps over to your battery bank. Uh, here you'll see a little connector this would actually plug into the battery box uh, so that you could run off of the batteries. And then the last thing is the power inverter. That's I believe a 300 watt pure sine wave power inverter. It does give you a couple of USB ports that you can use, as well as two outlets there to use. Typically, uh, that thing is not used. In fact, I'm not even sure that I've ever used it the first time. I like the capability in case I needed to uh, charge something up, 
but it's not something that we use a lot just because it's so lossy in its power conversion. So there's kind of a quick look at the box. One thing about it, you don't want to uh, lug this thing around very far. It does weigh 35 pounds as it sits now. That's without the antenna or the computer in the bottom of it. So it's probably pushing about 40 pounds once you get those two things loaded in here as well. All right, guys, so there's a quick tour of my HF Go Box. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to click the subscribe button and give us a thumbs up or maybe even leave us a comment down below. See you guys on the next video.